Hey guys, Matt from Total MTG here, and welcome to this week's Deck Tech. So welcome guys, and what deck have I got for you this week? Well, it was a brew that I took to GP London when I was doing the Spell Slinging event. It performed very well that day. I got beat a couple of times, but majority, I think I won 12, 13, 14 matches with it. So the deck definitely, definitely works because I played some exceptional players that day. And all different manner of decks, red-white uh, approach, uh, Mardu vehicles I played. I played another type of G um, Godfaro's gift deck. And I think it was blue, some blue-black control as well. So it definitely did well. Also played a uh, Raminate Red as well. Um, of type, as we say, because obviously it lost some cards, but it was still a very, you know, red aggro deck, and it performed very well and won. So, it's Esper Masterminds Control. Really, really good deck. Comes in at $339 that I priced up on SCG, and with my sponsors, Mana Traders, you can get it for 204 tickets. So, without further ado, let's start looking at the deck and the main components of it. So let's have a look at the two cards that really make this deck. Masterminds Acquisition and Approach of the Second Sun. Now this Masterminds card is really, really fun and very, very powerful as well. You get to search your library for a card, put it into your hand and shuffle your library. Or you can choose one from outside the game. So go to your um, sideboard, go and pick what you need. And then sometimes you can cast it on the same turn, sometimes you might have to wait a turn. But if you're going to get for that other approach of the second sun, you don't have to wait for those seven, you know, seven turns to potentially to get that approach in your hand and cast again. I have found Masterminds Acquisition to be a really good and useful card. And of course, it's very cheap as well at the moment to actually buy in card form. Really, really cheap, rare from Rivals of Ixlon. But like I said, a very, very powerful effect. So let's start off by looking at the creatures. We do have a two a Scarab God, two Ravenous Chupacabra, probably one of the breakout cards from Rivals of Ixalan, and we have the good old faithful Torrential Gearhulk. Scarab God can certainly win your games, Torrential Gearhulk can certainly win you games as well. The effects that both these cards have, like when yeah, you know the Gearhulk comes in, you can cast an instant card maybe without casting its mana cost, really, really good. Ravenous Chupacapra can come in, destroy a creature, and then you get a 2-2 body as well. This is in a lot of black color decks that splash black, literally sometimes just for this card. Because personally, I think it's really good, and I know a lot of people will agree with me there. And of course, the Scarab God. We will be destroying stuff, countering stuff, doing everything like that. The Scarab God can then, if you're in heavy creature decks, can take their creatures, bring them back as zombies. And you can drain your opponent, or basically you're going to have an army to attack and win the game. The Scarab God, for me, the best creature in standard at the moment. Absolutely love it. And if you're playing blue-black control decks, this is the card you want. Although it's a very expensive card, it is definitely, if you want a competitive deck, this is the card you want in your deck. So we're going to get on to the spells now. Best removal in standard, Fatal Push, we have a three of. And then we're going to look through our cards with a bit of opt. You get to scry one and draw a card. Essence Scatter is in there as a two of a lot of early mana creatures that will be coming down this format at the moment. Essence Scatter is nice there. Two mana count spell for those creatures. Very, very good. Some new cards from Rivals of Ixalan that I've been testing. I've been very impressed with Expel from Araska. Early on, late game, it can still be very good. I've even had Ascend a couple of times. You know, late game when you've got your lands down, everything like that. This could be really good for you. Uh, you get to return a target non-land permit to its owner's hand, so when maybe a Planeswalker is about to ultimate, one of those horrible Chandras or anything like that, you can just bounce it. Really good card for two mana. Baffling End is in as a one-off. When it ends the battlefield, exile target creature opponent cards with mana cost of three. Obviously, when that leaves, they get a 3-3 three, three dinosaur token, but I've literally never had that effect where they've actually removed my Baffling End. It's there as a one-off. I really like it. This is a bit of a toolbox kind of deck. Search for Ascanta, I think, is now probably the most expensive card in the deck. It's seen in modern play. It's an absolute classy, classy card from Ixalons. Beginning of your upkeep, you look at the top card, you may put it in your graveyard, or then you literally on top, and then you, when you've got seven or more cards, you may transform it 
into land where it helps you loot for that approach to the second sun, or maybe just some other kind of cantrip that you really do need. Counter spells, we've got some counter spells. We've got disallow, counter target spell, or activated or triggered ability. Great for those ultimate in planeswalkers as well, disallow. Very occasionally you will get to do that, and it's a very, very strong effect. Supreme Will can help you search for your approach to the second sun when you look at the top four, or it can be used as that counter spell, which obviously a lot of the times will work for you when they have to pay three, unless it will be countered. Profane Procession, this is, you know, this is a fun card. Uh, some, it's won me a couple of games. Sometimes it does get uh, cyborged out, but you know, you know, sort of dirty sort of games. This can prove to be very good. Well, you're nicking creatures, and then you're getting to cast them as well. You exile it. It is a five mana cost to do it. But if it's in your hand, turn three, there's no harm in putting it down. We've got plenty of land in this deck, and we will be able to do it. And the effect, if anything else, will just remove the creature, even if you don't get to cast them again when you transform it. But to me, it's a fun card. I put it in a deck, I've tried it out, and it's still warranted in its space. More removal, we've got a one-off cast out flash cycle if you want, but it obviously uses for the flash and then you get to exile a target non-land permanent. Glimmers is there, great card draw, you get to scry two, draw two cards, you get some energy, we're not an energy based deck at all, but the card is just that good that you know it's in the deck, we don't have to run energy to make this even better, it's just a good card drawing card and can help us siphon towards the approach if we need it. Settle the wreckage, people will play around this card a lot, but it has to be in the deck. It gets to exile those gods really hard. You know, if you've got Hazarat coming at you or something like that, this will exile them. The Scarab Cub, obviously, of your opponents won't go back to their hands. Sell the wreckage. Classy, classy card. Vraska's attempt is in there as a one-off. We can get rid of Planeswalkers and Creatures and it gains us a touch of life. And I've already touched on how good Mastermind's acquisition is. We run a two of. I started with three, but eventually they found the two is just enough. Fumigate is there in the main board as well. We've got a one-off, but we've got another one on the sideboard. Destroys all creatures. We obviously, we don't run a lot of creatures. And if we've got the Scarab God in hand, destroying a lot of creatures, putting them into the graveyard, can then feed your Scarab Gods. And of course, the last card is an approach of the second sun. It's there to win us the game, cast your approach, and then maybe you can masterminds for the other one if you don't get to that other, you know, the other one when it's tucked away for seven cards away. This card is brilliant. It wins your games. Sometimes they fail and counter the first one, but sometimes they don't want it shuffled back in. But it's a very strong card. Approach of the second sun will definitely win games. So now we're going to take a quick look at the sideboard, as you can see from the screen in front of you now. We've got Authority of Councils as a two of. Bring them in for the aggro decks. Duress is there as well when you're playing more against control sort of decks. Duress has been around for ages, reprinted, love that card. We also then have some negates. People might want to be countering stuff when we're playing that kind of control. And obviously they will be maybe with killing our creatures and sweeps and stuff like that. So negate is a perfect kind of counter spell to bring in. Even though we do use the graveyard quite a lot, Crook of Condemnation, there are decks that are going to use it quite a bit more than us at the moment. So Crook of Condemnation is there as a one-of. Dispossess and Lost Legacy were brought in. Lost Legacy was there already in my original one, but Dispossess was brought in to basically choose one of those annoying artifacts. It was, you know, I was playing a lot of the God Pharaoh's gift decks and I was finding them quite hard to beat. So when you can just name that artifact for three mana, maybe go and search it out with your masterminds. It's really, really strong. I've already mentioned as well that we've got an extra approach to Second Sun and Fumigate there. And there's also an extra cast out. Ixlon's Binding is there if you want to stop your opponent from casting something that you do exile, which means they can't basically cast it again. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that will stay on the battlefield for that effect. And Hostage Taker could be in the main board, maybe as a one-off, but it's in the sideboard at the moment. That's the thing that I'm flicking around. Let me know what you think in the comments, whether you think this could actually warrant a space in the main board. It's good in the sideboard and also to bring it in if we need it as well. But at the moment, this is how the sideboard is looking. So that was this week's Deck Tech, guys. It was my spell-slinging deck from GP London. Thanks again, Channel Fireball. I loved it. And I love playing that deck against a lot of you subscribers that turned up and played. It was really, really fun. Any questions about the deck, don't forget to leave in the comments for some of the cards. Maybe you want to swap out because you haven't got certain expensive cards. 
just let me know. Maybe we can come up with some kind of budgety sort of brew for it. I definitely think Mastermind's Acquisition can be used in a lot of different types of deck. It's a fun card, guys. Make sure you brew around it and let me see what you brew when you do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to hit that button and the little notification bell. And I'll see you all on the next video.